today's lesson, lesson seven, you can see the very first thing on the um, video notes is a warm-up. We're actually going to do this in class, so we're not doing this right now. So we can skip this part and go on to the rest of the lesson. Lesson seven, unit rate as a constant of proportionality. Well, you've heard me use that word a lot, a constant. Is the rate of change the same? Is there a constant ratio? Is there a constant number that you multiply by? Well, we're going to give that constant a new name, calling it the constant of proportionality. So wildlife preservation or conservationists are concerned about the deer population that might not be constant across the national forests. The scientists found that there were 144 deer that lived in a 16 square mile area of the forest. In another part of the forest, the conservationists counted 117 deer in a 13 square mile area. Yet a third conservationist counted 216, and you can see I corrected that because the number order is wrong, 216 deer in a 200 in a 24 square, and this should say mile here, not acre. These are all saying mile um, plot of the forest. Do the conservationists need to be worried? Hmm. Why does it matter if the deer population is not constant in a certain area of the national forest? Why does it matter? Well, if there's more deer in one area of the forest, maybe there will be um, a problem, could be a problem of overcrowding, or it could be a sign that vegetation, the plant life, maybe it's burned from forest fires, or it's just not growing, or there's a, um, a mold issue or some kind of a uh, disease. There could be disease in a certain area. Perhaps the deer become so over overpopulated that they start moving into the human area, like we had um, in the park, um, Duran Deesman Park in Arundaquite. There were too many deer in that area and they kept moving on to people's properties and they were eating a lot of plants and vegetation and people's gardens and it just got overcrowded. So there, there are reasons why um, damage to the land, overpopulation, food supplies, maybe there's a food supply issue like there's some kind of problem with the vegetation or they're going to start eating, you know, humans plants. So um, yes, conservationists do want to know that because that does affect humans at times and it will affect the number of deer that could possibly be sustained by that area. What is the population density of deer per square mile? Notice, deer, top first, top first. You've heard me say that, top first. Deer per, well I know that means divide, square mile, not acre, square mile. So what is the population density? Oh, is it consistent? So I would take, oh, they want me to do a table here. So if I do the table, I'm going to, Put my deer in square mile. I'm going to put deer on the top. Usually they put Y down on the bottom, which is the deer, but I'm going to put the deer on the top and make it consistent. I can make the table the way I want. So deer um, is in the 144 deer for 16 square miles, or I have the 117 deer for the 13 square mile, or I have the 216 for 24 square miles. Is that a constant unit rate? So if we organize that information in a chart, we would see that, yes, 16 square miles with 144. When I divide that, I get nine deer per square mile, or mile squared. I could write it that way, or SQ mile, square mile. Um, I also have 117 divided by 13, which equals that nine deer per 
square mile, and I could write it this way, square mile. Or if I check that first one, 216, or the last one, sorry, divided by 24, this last one, and I get nine deer per square mile. So I have the exact same ratio here. What is the population dust density? The unit rate of deer per one square mile is nine. Or deer per one square mile, so it's nine deer per one square mile. They put it at the end there, but I'd rather have it here. Nine deer per square mile. I have a constant unit right there. We call that value the constant of proportionality. So the constant of proportionality here is the unit rate. Oh, was that, that was on the bottom of the other one. So the unit rate is the exact same thing as the constant of proportionality. Nine deer per square mile. Nine deer per square mile. So the nine deer per square mile, the constant of proportionality, it's, it's, yes, it's telling me that every single time there is that same exact ratio or that same exact rate. What does the meaning of the constant of proportionality in this problem? Nine deer can be found or counted or live on one square mile. That's what it means in this context. There are nine deer living on every square mile. Use the unit rate of deer per square mile. Use the unit rate of deer per square mile to determine how many deer there are for 207 square miles. Well, if it's nine deer per square mile, nine times 207, and yes, I can use parentheses as my time sign, would give me 1,863 deer would live on. So if I wanted to add this to my table, I would say, oh, it would be 1,863 deer for the 207 square miles, putting the whole forest all together. Um, letter D says, use the unit rate to determine the number of square miles in which you would find 486 deer. So now they're giving me the deer. If I take the deer, if I take the deer, 486 deer, and I divide it by my nine deer per square mile, my unit rate, this is deer per square mile. And there's lots of ways you could write that. The deers cancel and I get how many square miles? So 486 divided by nine would give me, there would be 54 square miles needed to sustain 486 deer. So I could put that on the table and it would look like 486 deer at the end would need 54 square miles. So some vocabulary that you've heard me use over and over and over again, that idea of a constant, and spec it specifies a unique number. It's always the same. A variable is a letter that represents a number. It could change, like x could equal five. If a proportional relationship is described by a set of ordered pairs that satisfies the equation y equals kx, oh, we're gonna make an equation out of this, where k is the positive constant, then k is called that constant of proportionality. We're now gonna give a letter, a variable, to this constant rate that we've been multiplying by. We're now gonna call it K. This thing is called K, that unit rate. Every time I can multiply by 15 to get the m number of lawns. That $15 in that example that we did was another constant of proportionality. Nine deer per square mile, K equals, the constant is nine deer per square mile. So we're gonna give it a letter, it's called K, it's called the constant of proportionality. Then the variables, which we've seen in tables Y and X, have a relationship with that K. 
every time to figure out why you multiply it by the constant, you multiply x by the constant. We were doing that in tables. So you've already seen this, we just didn't have a fancy letter for it called k. Example two, you need what? Brandon came home from school and informed his mother that he had volunteered to make cookies for his entire grade level. Oh my gosh. He needed, the, for, his, for every seventh grader, he needed three cookies for each of the 96, oh, there's only 96, not 250 like here at Martha Brown. 96 students in seventh grade. He needs three cookies per each of the 96 students. Three cookies for everybody. Unfortunately, he needed the cookies for an event at the school on the very next day. So 96 students in seventh grade, mom needs three cookies for each one of them. That's a lot of cookies. Brandon and his mother determined that they can fit 36 cookies on two cookie sheets. Wow, they're gonna cook them. So they can put 36 on two cookie sheets. Hmm. Is the number of cookies proportional to the number of sheets used in the baking? Create a table that shows data for the number of sheets, cookie sheets, needed for the total number of cookies that they need. Okay, so if two cookie sheets, so I'm gonna make a table here as it suggests, two cookie sheets, so this is the cookie sheets. I'll say cookie, yes. Cookie, oh, well, maybe sheets. Cookie sheets, and this is then the number of cookies that you get. How many cookies come off of it? Oh, they both kind of have cookies in them. Cookie sheet, maybe the baking pan. I don't know, uh, I think I'll leave it that. So two cookie sheets gives you 36 cookies. Yeah, I, I know from two to 36 that that's, if you get 36 cookies per every two cookie sheets, you also get 18 cookies for one. So I could figure out three, but I'm gonna skip, I'm gonna double, I'm gonna multiply by two. So now if I have four cookie sheets, I would have 72 cookies. That's the same ratio, because 72 divided by four would be an 18 to one ratio. Mm, that's not getting me very far. I need to have 96, 96 students and each kid gets three. 96 times three, Oh, I'm going to be building this table forever. 3 times 6 is 18, carry the 1. 3 times 9 is 27, and 1 makes 280. I need to get to 288. This table is going to be very long if I just keep doubling. How about if I have 10 cookie sheets? I know I can get 18 cookies on 1, so 18 times 10 would give me 180. Is it okay that I skipped some of those? It's okay that I skipped 6 and 8. So 180... I gotta get up to 288. Hmm, 180, well, let's see. Would it be better just to, oh, look at this. 180 plus 36 plus 72. Hey, that's 288. So if I add two cookie sheets and four cookie sheets and 10, I just saw this, I would get 16 cookie sheets. That would be my 288 cookies. So yes, I skipped some but aren't they all still the same ratio? 180 over 10, hey, that's 18 to one ratio. 36 over two, that's an 18 to one ratio. 72 over four, that's an 18 to one ratio. And I know 288 over 16, because I did that right there, is also an 18 to one ratio. Yes, the unit rate is 18. That's right there. The constant of proportionality, I know what that is. It's also 18. What does it mean? I wrote it up here. It means 18 cookies per every sheet. Per cookie sheet, and I'm just gonna call it sheet for short. It took two hours to bake eight sheets of the cookies. It took two hours to bake eight sheets of the cookies. If Brandon and his mother begin baking at four o'clock, when are they gonna finish? Oh boy. We've gotta do how many sheets of the cookies? We, oh, we only have to do 16. Okay, so two hours to bake 
eight sheets. Well, I've got to make 16 sheets of cookies. 16 times 18 gives me those 288 cookies that I need. So, yeah, if I multiply this, my denominator, my baking sheets by two, multiply my hours by two, I'm going to get four hours. That's pretty easy. I did that through the equal ratio way. So it's going to take those 16 sheets of cookies, so it'll take four hours. When will they finish baking the cookies? Well, if they started at four, and I had four hours, they will finish at 8 p.m. Now you know why this example is called, you need what? That's mom's usual response. You need what? You volunteered to bring what tomorrow? Oh, moms, give us a couple days notice, please. Next example, example number three, French class cooking. Oh, we're cooking again. Suzanne and Margot wanted to prepare crepes, ooh, for all of the students in their French class, much smaller. A recipe makes 20 crepes with a certain amount of flour, milk, and eggs. Oh, crepes are yummy. Have we ever had crepes? Ooh, very good. The girls know that they are already having, that they already have plenty of flour and milk, but need to determine the number of eggs needed to make 50 crepes. Oh, they must have 50 kids in their French class, big class, because they are not sure they have enough eggs for the recipe. Hmm, considering the amount of eggs, the amount of eggs, two eggs makes, oh, recipe makes 20 crepes. Makes 20 crepes with a certain amount of flour, milk, and two eggs. So they didn't even say how much flour and milk, they just said certain. So I'm going to be comparing two eggs makes 20 crepes. Okay. So if two eggs makes 20 crepes, What is the constant of proportionality? Well, one egg would make 10 crepes, right? Because they're not sure they have enough eggs for the recipe. Considering the amount of eggs necessary to make the crepes, notice that I put eggs on the top. Top first, first, top. Eggs came first, they went on the top. Crepes came second, they went on the bottom. That's how I decided to put the two eggs on the top and the 20 crepes on the bottom. So they, for every one egg, if I divide by two up here, and then divide to keep an equal ratio or a constant, I'm gonna get 10 crepes. One egg will make 10 crepes. What is the constant of proportionality? The constant of proportionality is 1 tenth. One makes 10. What does the constant of proportionality mean in this context? What does it mean? One egg will make, one egg is needed to make 10 crepes. That's what it means in this context. What is the 1 to 10 ratio? You have to give it its labels. Because yes, it is a unit rate. It has two labels. We're still following through with that. Two labels on our rates. How many eggs will be needed for the 50 crepes? Well, if I take 50 and I multiply it by one egg, it gives me 10. If I multiply it by that 1 10, I'm gonna get 50 times one. I could put this over one to make it easier. 50 times 1 would give me 50, and 1 times 10 would give me 10. 50 divided by 10, I would need 5 eggs to make, right? 5 eggs? I would need 5 eggs to make those 50 crepes, right? And that's it for today's lesson.